Introduce yourself, please. I am Pavel Pavlovich Schwetz. Your date of birth. January 9, 1983. 41? 40. City of birth. Stanitsa, Oblivka, Rostov region. Rostov region. What do you mean by Stanitsa? Slightly smaller than an urban type settlement. It's not a village or a township, but something in between? Yes. Do you consent to the recording and publication of this conversation? Yes. Why? I have nothing to hide. That's a good thing. Who were you before the war? Plumber. And who did you become during the war? Shooter. Are you a Marine? No. Just a shooter? Yes, rifleman. So you were mobilized? Yes. When were you called? In the year 2002. Who were you there? Shooter again. By profession, how were you mobilized? I had a subpoena for retraining. When did you get it? I got it in the middle of September. You mean before the announcement? Yes. You have all been deceived. This particular summons was for the 26th, and on the 25th they gave orders for mobilization. We got there. There were many of us. They took away those summonses and gave us new ones, not for retraining, but for mobilization. Interesting. That is, as early as mid-September, they began to inundate the people with subpoenas to provide an advance wave. We had it written that it was retraining. When did you get there? 26th. Your summons said that you had to arrive on the 26th of September? Yes. You came in, they took away your summons and said. Yes, it happened right on the spot. How many specialists have they recruited like you? That day, there were 43 people. They were people from my military recruitment office. Were there many who wanted to fight? No, not much. Mostly the subpoenas came to people at work. Thirsty. Perhaps those who have had too much to drink. They must have shouted, let's kill those Ukrainians. It didn't sound so rough. Approximately. There were people like that. And the rest? The rest went because the summons came. Especially before that, a new law was introduced, under which anyone who refused could face a huge prison sentence. What kind of education do you have? I only finished high school. And then I graduated as a plumber. How many classes? Twelve. Night school. And specialized courses in plumbing. Yes. And a job for life. Yes. Repairs, home installation? I worked in a formal job. This is an emergency service. And yes, when there is. Can you move over a little bit? So? Yes, because there's a chance that you're not in the frame completely, and viewers will say, the blogger cropped the prisoner. No, nobody cut anybody off. Where were you 40 men sent after the military enlistment office? We were first sent to the city of Volsky. Volsky? Yes. This is a satellite city of Volgograd. They changed our clothes there. We stayed there for several days put us in buses and took us to the firing range. Were there rejects? No. It's just that at that time they eliminated those with criminal records. Were there people there with criminal records? No, it's not really a criminal record. He was under investigation. There was one guy under investigation, and the other guy also had something to do with criminal proceedings. They were the only ones sent away, and I didn't see any other refuseniks. What then? We were at the range, but I don't remember exactly. Never mind. About two weeks. Have you been training? Sort of, yeah. You said it in an uncertain way. How many boxes of ammunition did you shoot? No, I didn't shoot that much. How much? We shot two or three times. A magazine of ammunition? By two. Enough for a special forces man. What kind of armor did you have? I don't know much about armor. Helmet, Kolpak. The helmet was Kevlar. Was it written Kolpak? Nothing was written. There should. But it looks a little bit like the old helmets. The leather is so thick there, like some kind of plastic. This product is called Kolpak. They took Soviet helmets. The cap is all external and internal decoration, let's call it that. No, it's all plastic. Helmet? Yes, it's thick plastic. Tough? I don't know, but yeah, he's pretty tough. We were told it was Kevlar. We were given this in Volgograd. 
Where were you sent after the firing range? They put us on a train at the firing range, took us to the Rostov region, and then took us in Kamaz trucks somewhere else, already to Ukraine. What do you mean somewhere? October, November. We were hardly ever near any populated areas. You didn't know where you were for three months? No, I'm telling you the story in order. Go on. We stayed there for about a month and a half. We lived in the plantations. We were constantly transported from place to place and told that this was a training ground. Training took place there, for about five days. After a while, training would start again. How's the food supply? Often we bought everything ourselves. How? We hired a car or, kamaz, that drove by. And the dry rations? There weren't very many of them. The record was two dry rations for three, for three days? No, we were more or less fine. We took everything with us. We had everything of our own. No one gave us anything. Did you have hot food? No. It was when we moved. Were you really traveling like some kind of merchant army, with all your belongings, food, and baggage? That's the way it was. The whole platoon decided to go to the store to buy canned goods? Yes, hot food came later, when we were already in the settlement. Where did you bathe? We didn't wash. I know that. I mean, I'm not surprised, because it took two months, October, November, then you were moved somewhere. Yes, we were moved to a settlement, which I think is called Novo Bishivo. Let it be. Okay, the place where we were settled was a kindergarten. And there we were. What did you learn in kindergarten? We were just living there, and it seems like someone had lived there before us. Was there a kitchen already? No, not there, but close by. Nearby? Yes, there was a kitchen and sometimes a field bath came. Sometimes? The kitchen was always there, but sometimes a field bath came. Sometimes, how often is that? About once a week, or... Not bad. Sometimes there was. I see. Next, was there any war at all? Any shooting? No, it was all quiet. But then they started taking young guys to combat positions. For one or two days. Like this. Were there any wounded? Were. Dead? Were. What did they die for? I don't have an answer for this. What would you die for? I would die for nothing. For the motherland? No. I don't know. Why not for the motherland? I don't know what I would have died for. What if you think about it or fantasize about it? I think I would have died for nothing. Just like that, for nothing. You're right to say that. Tell us about January. January. We had already been moved to another settlement. Mandrikino, I think. Was it tougher already? Yes, but not all the time. We were picked up half a platoon at a time then the whole platoon. We didn't go on the offensive. We were taken for a day to a facility called, Tractor. We were supposed to guard it. Something like this. January is also about. I was already here at the end of January. Tell us about the day you were captured. Already after I handed over my watch, we were advancing to what was called, Zero. A car was supposed to pick us up there but I got a little behind and the mortar fire started. How many of you were there? Ten. Ten? Yes. The shelling started. I was either concussed or panicked and went the wrong way and came out to the Ukrainian soldiers. What did they say? They asked who I was. I answered and was grabbed. What language did they speak? In Russian. Did it surprise you? No. Basically everyone I saw, including civilians, spoke Russian. You are defending the Russian language. How shall I put it? As long as I've been here, I've never seen Russian banned because everyone spoke Russian. What does that tell you? The Russian language is not oppressed. Can you imagine how I can be forbidden to speak Russian? It's impossible. How has your stupid propaganda managed to zombify everyone? As you say, it's propaganda. Then let's talk about it. This has been happening for a long time. Have you seen the NATO people? No, 
I didn't see any foreigners. No, we have them. I did not see. We have foreigners. They fight in volunteer battalions under contract with the armed forces and carry out the tasks of our general staff, that is, these are people who have come and are fighting. We have Russians who are fighting. They are members of the Russian Freedom Legion. It is staffed and composed solely of the likes of you. They have our military tickets, they are paid by the state and they fight. I saw it online. Was this before the captivity? Yes. And what did you see on the internet? I saw a guy who said he was Russian but was fighting for Ukraine. What was the mood in your company? I wouldn't say it was anything special. We weren't in a super combative mood. Why? Everyone saw it all happening and, for the most part, no one understood why or how. Why? I told you no one understood. How are our soldiers different from you? I haven't come across it much. No, I'm not talking about soldiers in the sense of soldier, I'm talking about the motives of war. They are on their own land. They are fighting for their land. You're an adult, and I'm interested in your thoughts on what's next. However, I am not a very far-sighted person and can only assume. Assume. I think the war will end, but I can't even imagine how and with what. Well, that's understandable. Who do you think will win? I can't answer that question. Are you afraid of something? I don't know. The thing is, I don't even know how to reason with this. You watch the news, don't you? Yes. What's in the news? They say Ukrainian soldiers are killing many of our soldiers. We kill invaders. Yes. Are you an invader? Yes. Yes, we are being armed, we are being given modern equipment, modern weapons, and you are running out of yours and you don't have time to make it. It's on the news. I don't want and have no right to pull any thoughts out of you. Who's waiting for you at home? Wife and kids. How many children? Two. Boys or girls? A boy and a girl. Do they know you're here? I don't know. I haven't contacted them. We will try to call your family. You know, there's nothing remarkable in your story. When were you captured? I don't remember the exact date. It was the middle or end of January. I can't remember. Can I send a voice message? She's not picking up the phone. No, it's... You will be able to send a voice message. She won't answer. It hasn't even been read. Send a voicemail. What should I click on? Begin. Vika, hi. I'm doing fine. I'm in captivity. Answer the call. If you don't pick up the phone today, you can write to this number. This is the number of the person who is interviewing us. And tell the recruitment office and my unit if they don't know about it. I kiss the kids. How did your wife react when she found out you were in the military recruitment office? She didn't even have time to react to the whole thing. How's that? So I was first taken for retraining, and then there was no possibility. Weren't you released on the 26th? No, we already came to the retraining with small bags. We had food for three days and on the 26th we were put on buses right away, so we weren't home. You weren't even given a chance to understand what was going on. It was not possible. Because otherwise many people would run away. Would you run away? Probably, yes. What would you do? Why talk about it now? That's interesting. Maybe it will help someone. As you told me earlier, I'm a grown man. I have some illnesses. Disease is a weak cause. Did you have a medical exam before you left? No. So, disease is not an option. What is the next version? A. You have. I know that among them there are people who, in principle, have no vision, but they still assign him as a spotter. I also have intervertebral hernias. This is fine. If there were only hernias? In fact, if you want, you can be launched into space. From the trampoline to the sky. So after all, we were practically launched into space. What other options do you have? I. You're in luck. 
Yes. I understand that you got beaten up a little bit when you got caught. I wouldn't say it was much of a beating. It was an educational conversation and it was necessary to get information from you. Basically, the data that I knew was already available to the Ukrainian military. Did they tell you what they know? They showed me on the map, and all the points are marked there. Are our drones flying? Yes. What about yours? Some are flying. Is this war fun? War can't be fun. There are people who like war. I talk to them. I don't think there's anything fun about it. What is the real purpose of all the horror going on around here? I can't even guess. Your country. But I can't even guess. Don't you have enough land? To be honest, I don't go anywhere beyond the Rostov and Volgograd regions. In short, you just don't care about what's going on around you. You were left to die in a foreign country. If it's like this. It is, if, no, it is. We were thrown into a foreign country to die. I want to know about demilitarization. I don't even know the meaning of the word. I've heard him, but I don't know him. Militarization is arming, and demilitarization is disarming. However, judging by current events, we are armed and equipped for many decades to come. That is, this goal of Putin, your czar, has failed. I didn't see us being armed with something supernatural. You? Yes. Have you seen the Armada tank? I've only seen it on TV. So? Apart from the Kalashnikov assault rifle and RPK, I saw nothing at our positions. Nanotechnology? Have you seen our pigeons, the bio pigeons from the biolabs? I didn't. We had mosquitoes in the summer. Bio mosquitoes. No, I saw mice. Mice? There are a lot of mice in the plantings. This is our reconnaissance team. I get it. They come running in and sketch out your positions. Every third mouse has some kind of explosive package. What does denazification mean? I don't know about that. That's the reason. I'm not good at these terms. Is there any other number? No, I only remember one number. No, she only answers voice messages. Let's try to call one last time. You told me so little, I was hoping you would describe the war of the worlds here. So I'm not eloquent enough and, I guess I'm a little shy. Why are you shy? It's always been that way. Is that a funny question? No, she won't pick up the phone. No means no. By tradition, our prisoners of war turn to their countrymen, of course, if they want. No, I. How do you say? I will tell them everything when I meet them. What will you tell them? You will come home. What floor do you live on? On the first floor. On the first one, you arrive. You get out of the car. And then on the threshold, in front of the entrance are your neighbors. Only old women are there. Old ladies? I lived in a residential area. The old ladies will say at once that a hero has come. I don't know what to say. Got out of Nazi captivity. I think no. What do you tell your colleagues at work? I will tell the truth. What is the truth? I wouldn't want to talk on camera. I'll say, but I won't. No, I don't want to say it on camera, and without the camera I will tell the truth. That's the whole point. Your truth is heard in the bathroom or toilet with the lights off and you can't say it without fear. It probably is. Because. That's what your king wants. And he achieved his goal. Thirty years have not passed in vain. Goebbels must be turning over in his coffin, knowing what television can do to us. If only he knew how you can intimidate people with television. 
are you aware that if you avoid service, no one will put you in jail? No, I didn't. I report, this is an administrative fine. I didn't know that. What? I didn't know that. You were only told about 10 years in prison, but no one checked that. Did you check? No. And no one has checked yet, there was no one to check. No one has yet been jailed in this whole cannibal story. Do you know why no one has been jailed? No. Because too many people would have to be imprisoned. Yes. And who is going to put people in jail in the military? Through a private military company. Yes. Wagner, and you still have to go to war. Do you understand? Cycle. For you, it's the meat cycle. If he doesn't go himself, we'll intimidate him. And if he's really smart and goes to jail, that's where they pick him up and send him away. Do you know what there is a storm division? In addition to Wagner, the Ministry of Defense also recruits prisoners. I didn't hear that one. And yet, it exists. That's a fact. This is not a made-up story. Thank you for the conversation, but the conversation was like Dmitri's monologue to himself, because we have a shy Volgograd pal. Excuse me. He doesn't know why he came here. You don't know? It doesn't seem to matter to you whether you are a prisoner or not. I don't know. You are being fed and watered. Do you know what my previous interlocutor said? He says it's so comfortable here in captivity. I lie down, rest, watch TV, eat. I eat two hot meals a day. They gave me liver today. I play backgammon. It's better here than in the Russian army. No, actually. That's what they said an hour ago. No, I meant that it is. We are not humiliated. We are not killed. We are fed. We are resting. Maybe you could still make an appeal, so that people there would think about it. I wouldn't want that. Okay, then, on a major or minor note? I am not a musician. Do you know the difference? Major is. I have heard the colloquial meaning of the word, major. And the minor is not the funniest theme, but that's not for sure. Write in the comments, because I'm not a musician either.